Hello, I'm Professor Bill Livingston from the University of Maine, and I'll be giving a short presentation talking about various aspects of climate and the effects on various tree pests and disease that we have in the state. I like to think of tree disease as involving three important factors. One being the tree, whether it's susceptible or resistant. Then you have a stress involved, which can be biotic or abiotic. And then you have the environment, the site, the climate, and other species affecting the, the tree and the stresses. So what we'll be talking about in this presentation are specific climatic factors that are important in Maine dealing with, with the tree disease. And those involve spring precipitation, warm winters, and droughts. First, looking at the spring precipitations, that since the mid-2000s, when we look at spring precipitation, in this case in June, we're seeing that we've had a number of years where the amount of precipitation is getting up to more than double what the average is. And this is favoring needle fungi that we find on eastern white pine. They're present in the tree, but in the these wet springs, it's favoring the spread of the fungi from infected needles to new needles. And then we're finding the year after these wet springs that we get this large amount of yellowing, needle damage occurring on the white pine. And one year, this isn't too bad, but as you can see, since the mid 2000s, we've had a number of years, moist years of mess of of wet precipitation resulting in quite a bit of needle loss on, on the trees and to where there's been some reports of, of dying back. But where we suffer this, especially in the wet years, tens of thousands of acres of white pine in Maine and also we see this throughout the Northeast have been suffering this needle damage due to this increased precipitation in June. Another case of climate affecting uh, tree pests is dealing with warmer winters. Talk about the balsam woolly adelgid. This is a non-native insect that affects the balsam fir. It'll feed on the bark of the fir and on the twigs and you'll get this kind of uh, really thinning out crown and, and slow dieback that this eventually will kill, kill the balsam fir. However, minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit is lethal. And normally our winter temperatures, when we look at the number of times it gets down that cold, is enough to, to kill off the insect. Uh, however, right on the coast, that rarely happens. And so this insect pretty well has um, damaged most of the fur in coastal areas of Maine. What's changed is when we just go a bit inland, so such example, uh, woodland, Orono is about the same situation. Prior to 1940, there were quite a few events during the wintertime where it got down to this lethal temperature. However, since 1940, the number of times with the lethal temperatures has gone down quite a bit. And the result is we've seen the adelgid intensify more inland and in the early 2000s actually result in some balsam fur mortality uh, well up towards the airline, uh, well away from the coast. So warmer temperatures are making the adelgid, balsam woolly adelgid, more, more lethal. And in studies done by Alison Canote for her master's work, that she did tree ring analysis and we could actually see where the adelgid, based on uh, markings on the tree rings, we could actually see where the adelgid incidence, and it's ever since the 1940s, the adelgid incidence has been increasing in the balsam fir in the more inland areas of the state. So warmer winters, we now have more problems with the adelgid. Same is true for a new insect that's coming into the state, the hemlock woolly adelgid, another non-native insect, native to Japan. But fortunately, it's from the moderate climates of Japan, and the insect population we have on the hemlock is killed off by minus 13 Fahrenheit. 
and that shows the mortality that, that can occur with this insect with the cold temperatures. However, we're expecting that temperatures are going to be warming and we've developed some models to predict what might happen to the hemlock, the health of the hemlock as the temperatures warm up. So in the early 90s, early 2000, into the 90s, early 2000s, we're predicting that about 92,000 acres had a greater chance than 50% of having declining hemlock on them in just about all coastal areas. If we increase the January minimum temperature by 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit, then the amount of areas where we're likely to see the, the decline increase by fivefold, up to over 500,000 acres. And if the temperature increases by 3.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which some, some models are predicting, and we're dealing with over one and a half million acres that where we'll have declining hemlock, mostly spreading inland, kind of like what we're seeing with the balsam oleodelgid, and then on the southern slopes, on warmer slopes, on uh, higher elevations in, in western Maine. So warmer temperatures likely to result in more damage due to hemlock oleodelgid. And to note that do expect the insect to be found farther north, but it'll be kept at lower populations because of the colder temperatures in that region as to where hopefully it will not result in decline of the hemlock outside of these areas, say within 100 miles of the coast, 50 miles of the coast. Now looking at droughts. White pine is susceptible to decline if it grows in dense stands and has shallow rooting because of various soil factors. And then can get a drought, late season drought is where we found the damage to occur. And then in these dense stands, so we get dying off. Uh, the way we check the droughts is just looking at stream flow. And there was a particular severe one in 1995. It was uh, way below what the average, the other dry years that consider this like a hundred year drought in the southern part of Maine. The result is up to 50% of the white pine in the stands were dying back. And then as the trees weakened, you did see other pests come in. If spark beetles would come in, armillaria root rot disease would come in, and also Clusiopsis canker became more aggressive and colonize the stems of the trees. So drought on these dense white pine stands predisposed them or incited the, a dieback in them where we saw the increase in insects and pathogenic fungi. Beech bark disease also interacts with the climate. That beech bark disease, similar like the adelgid, feeds on the sap of beech in this case, beech trees and get this white covering on it. And then it weakens the trees to where they, then a fungus comes in and starts to generate cankers. This is a bit more hardy. Minus 35 is lethal. Minus 22 is damaging, meaning most of the state suffers from insect populations and cankers forming. Just on the Quebec border, is it been cold enough to keep the insect at, uh, from getting high populations. However, around the year 2000, that we unfortunately had low numbers of these damaging events. Then combined with that, we also had these dry periods, especially in 2001. And the scale insect crawls around on the beech trees in August. And if it rains, it washes them off and, and keeps the population low. But in 2000, there we had high survival in wintertime, high survival in the summertime. Beach was stressed by drought. And then all across the northern part of the state, we had a high amount of, of mortality of the beech trees. So what to do about it? With white pine, where we can have problems with drought and needle damage, the episodes of stress will continue. And to minimize other stresses means make sure you got pine, 
favor the pine where it's on good sites for growing it, and especially thin properly. Maintain low densities to avoid the competition, and these will be able to tolerate these other stresses better. For beach and beach bark disease, expect more mortality episodes. And really with beach, it's favor other species, but where you find resistant beach trees where there is no scale, where there is no cankering, is to keep those and protect those and keep those in the forest environment. Balsam fir and balsam willy adelgid, really expecting to see more damage occur on the balsam fir up to root two and the best strategy there is kind of like with the uh, spruce budworm is you favor other species than, than the balsam fir. Hemlock mortality is likely to be restricted to about 50 miles of the coast. So within that, that area is most likely hemlock is going to uh, die out from those forests and be replaced by, by other species, most likely spruce and fir. Hemlock may decline on the drought prone sites in southwestern Maine because of the warmer temperatures allowing the scales to have higher populations. But kind of looking at it, it's okay to keep hemlock on good sites if it's greater than 50 miles from the coast. That's the end of the presentation. Climate is having an impact on, on tree pests and disease in the state of Maine and really need to manage the forest to allow it to be more resilient and be able to tolerate these, these stresses that are occurring in our forests.